All right, now back to that breaking news. Uh, AT&T and Time Warner just a short moment ago, federal judge gave the go-ahead for this merger. Andre Barlow is a former U.S. Department of Justice antitrust attorney, and he joins us now. Uh, Andre, are you surprised? At, I know the overall uh, uh, sort of conventional wisdom was maybe this would be the outcome. Nevertheless, the government uh, stated and said that they felt they had a pretty strong case. So were you surprised with this outcome? I was not surprised in the outcome. Uh, it made sense to me. I, I actually sat through the trial, so I, I was able to, to uh, watch uh, the, the evidence presented at trial. So I saw exactly what Judge Leon saw. Okay, so the, just the, so the audience knows, the, the government's attorney was saying, hey, you go back to antitrust rulings, 1963, Philadelphia National Bank, and this is, this is compelling because I think it bleeds over to all other industries where regulators, uh, you know, need not uh, to have some ultimate reckoning as a, the social economic debts or, or, or credits. In other words, they could focus on competition and the ultimate impact on consumers uh, and, and, and rather than, you know, having to nitpick and saying, well, this is a vertical integration. Why did this judge see it differently? Well, I, I think what he was looking at is just right off the bat, one of the things that the Department of Justice conceded was that DirecTV uh, was was going to have cost savings from this transaction. So AT&T's acquisition of, uh, uh, of uh, Time Warner, remember what it's all about, but AT&T also owns DirecTV. Uh, now, one of the things that was conceded at trial was that there would be cost savings to DirecTV, meaning that AT&T and DirecTV customers, about 25 million of them, would actually see lower prices. So that was conceded by the government. Uh, and, and I think that the judge took that and, and he believed that that was really significant. So what the case was really about was could, could the, could the, could the combined firm actually raise costs to its rivals, and the rivals are the distributors, other cable companies, and to uh, to, to Dish Network. And uh, the the judge, what he saw there is that he thought that the government lacked uh, sufficient evidence on that point. Well, Andre, uh, real quick before I let you go, then, uh, then then does this create a wild wild west scenario now, uh, not just in this industry but in other industries, and ultimately. Uh, are we looking at just two or three competitors in key industries, which would be the antithesis of capitalism for some folks? I don't believe so. Just because the, the government loses one case doesn't mean that, that it, it, it means that we're, we're in the, the wild, wild west and all deals will be cleared. Right. I, think, I think everyone should be, um, be careful about what deals they bring in front of the Department of Justice. Losing a case like this doesn't dis, dis, dissuade them from bringing other cases. They will do it when, whenever they believe a deal is anti-competitive, they will bring the case. They don't bring the easy ones, they bring the tough ones. All right, Andre, thank you very much. You really uh, cleared a lot of things up. I appreciate it. Sure. Hey, now Thanks we're going to talk about the market and business aspect of this. Uh, Melissa Armo, the stock swoosh, uh, uh, is with us. Okay, so the conventional wisdom is now the bidding war begins for Fox, uh, Fox's assets uh, outside of the news organization. Comcast for perhaps will offer a bid in the morning, superseding Disney's bid. Uh, we're talking billions and billions of dollars, and, uh, and, and it's not just going to be this industry. So what do you make of this now opening the floodgates from a stock market investment point of view of a bunch of mergers going on right now? I don't think it's good. Do you think it's good? No, no, that's not what I'm asking. I'm, oh. I'm asking, do you think, though, it will spur a bunch of, oh, a yes. bunch of merger I, activity? Just like you said, I mean, tomorrow morning, they can put in a bid. We, we thought this Disney Fox thing was done. We thought it was a done deal. It's probably not now, because like you just said, tomorrow morning, tonight, that Comcast could come in with a bid, and it could be bigger than Disney, and then what's going to happen? Is Disney going to up it? What's Fox going to do? Right. Well, as a student of creative destruction, uh, you know, we've seen major industries, ma major companies go out of business that were once untouchable juggernauts, and a lot of time technology has something to do with that so Netflix has changed the whole has changed everything they've got a market cap uh, bigger than Disney's market cap what what would a Time Warner and an AT&T do to compete in the new Netflix world? Well, that's why the writing was on the wall that this was going to happen at some point. Assuming, but you don't think it's good, though. I don't think it's good, and here's why. It's like they're controlling the content, and they're going to control the prices. The fact that someone thinks the price is going to go down is absolutely ridiculous. If you have 25 companies out there, you can choose where you want to go, and you can choose the content you want to see. Now you're going to have probably two, three, 
four. You're right. All these mergers, it's like gobbling up, gobbling up, gobbling up. They're going to gobble up all the small, medium, even big ones are going to gobble. Who's going to, what's going to happen next? Google's going to buy, Amazon's going to buy Netflix. Like, can't you just see the writing on the wall where we have like two choices or three choices? And that, here's the thing, they're, they're creating the content, they're controlling the content. These companies that were telecom companies, internet companies, they're delivering the information you to your home, that, you're watching them, and now they're creating it too, they're controlling the content. Do you think though that a Comcast, uh, AT&T, uh, uh, and some of these other uh, folks who control the old school pipes, cable, uh, which is a massive cut cording, could survive in a world where, where Netflix and Amazon and Hulu exist and, there, and there's a steady stream of people who are leaving that old business model mm -hmm. into this new business model. There was no way for them to survive otherwise. Well, that's the thing. I mean, exactly. They could find a way to survive on their own by creating their own or they can do something different where they're trying to buy these bigger ones, but I'm saying it's not good for consumers. Now, Time Warner is up tonight but, huge. But for the stock market, though, we could see a wave of acquisitions. Yes, and if you, okay. if you own the right stock, you're going to make money. If you own the wrong one, you won't, so it depends. Well, you'll know if you own the wrong one because they're probably already a, a stock that's in trouble. Melissa, <laughs> we'll talk again real soon. By the way, hypocrisy completely off the rails following President Trump's historic summit. Kim Jong-un, well... <laughs> They're upset. Many people are saying this is not a success. Wait until we share some of the crazy calls next.